a simple, easy-going, rainy Saturday morning, so we're doing some hurdy-gurdy building. Because uh, I can't go and do some arrow shooting this morning. Where are my cameras? There we go. Hello, good morning. And uh, instead of going outside, I'm going to be doing a little bit of this, maybe for an hour, hour and a half, something like that. Uh, so, this is obviously part three. We have done two parts already, and this is where we got up to. It's really good. Uh, so, I've managed to get this uh, soundboard put together. We had this uh, micro adjustment here uh, for the setting, I, we think is what's for setting the intonation of the strings. Uh, and we've got this mechanism, which is really nice. We, I remember being particularly pleased with how well it sort of all moved once everything was rigidly locked in place. Uh, so, yeah, pretty good. Happy so far. Ah, Gorbit, hello! <laughs> you might not have seen some of the uh, the, uh, the hurdy-gurdy builds. We're building a hurdy-gurdy at the moment. <coughs> uh, and we're up to, where are we up to on the instructions? So I think we're now up to, we did the soundboard, we put the soundboard on backwards, which we learned. We're now on to some decorative components. Let's have a look. So uh, I will move the uh, the main box out of the way. Now I've also got some... Sort of, wooden detritus everywhere, um, which I think means uh, we need a bit of a tidy up, so I'll just make sure I've got the tools, the sandpaper, the wax, the poking thing, uh, but all of these broken bits, uh, I'm just going to get out of the way, because I don't think they're, they're, they're not necessary, and they're just consuming up bench space now. <laughs> well, this has been quite good fun. Uh, it's a very good kit. I've enjoyed this anyway. Uh, right, so it says I need parts. Oh, it's already saying I actually need a knife to cut this out with. Is that why? Ah, that's why I need my knife. There we go. That's why I have this. I forgot why I had the Stanley blade here. Uh, right, it is not that one. Uh, we've not got many parts left on this one yet. Oh. Uh, Rosso, yes, we're doing some hurdy gurdy. Julian, hello, thank you very much. It's very kind of you. Uh, particularly for subscribing to nonsense such as this, uh, which is the hurdy gurdy building. Uh, so, it's because it's raining today where I am, so it's not very much fun for doing uh, doing bows and arrows and things like that, which is what I'd usually be doing on a Saturday morning. Uh, I've lost, already lost the parts that I'm looking for. I'm looking for the two big board sections. This is board two and board four, but I don't know which those are. No, it's not that one. Uh, it's not like, oh, we've got a lot to go, haven't we, really? Uh, it's not that one. <coughs> Looked like it was that one. Let me just put those to one side for a second. Uh, things with this one, and it looks like we're going to be putting on this uh, floral path here. <coughs> uh, coupled with this bit here. And uh, to do that, it says we're going to need to poke out some 43s, which is this bit here. So let's get those bits out. This was the, the scary part, was actually getting the components out of the wood, wasn't it? I was wondering if my camera is not quite as far normal as it normally is. I've not got my external light on today. We'll see if we can get away with the gloomy lit skies. It is daylight, believe it or not. We're not so far north that we can't see anything. Right. No, we're going to need the knife to pop these out, so let's have a look. I've also not got my glasses on today, so this could be exciting. And if you see me chop off part of my finger, uh, then, yeah, do actually do something about it. Don't just leave me uh, sort of sat here holding my own finger. Obviously, I won't be able to dial. So we need those. Luke Powell, howdy! Uh, yes, it, it has been good fun actually doing some hurdy gurdy. When it, when it's uh, when I get the opportunity to, I do some of this stuff. Uh, good morning, Danny Cron. Trying to confuse people with random online times. <laughs> yes, <laughs> can we laugh? Of course you can laugh. You can laugh when I'm cutting my fingers off. Is that what you say? Oh, it's all clicking. See the delay in the chat. Yes, for those of you expecting coding all the time, well, I've done that much coding, to be honest, for really for the last six months. Uh, obviously, you all know the reasons why. Uh, but that's changing, uh, because as of next year, I'm taking some time off work, uh, which will give me some time to actually catch up with a few projects. 
not that I've not been doing any code. Uh, I've just not been doing sort of stuff that's uh, publicly viewable and visible. Uh, I've been taking the time to work on a couple of personal projects as well, uh, which which are, are not one loan coder stuff, uh, but things that I've wanted to code. It's quite difficult once you've got sort of an established. People expect sort of something every couple of weeks. Uh, actually, finding the time to go and work on your own personal things uh, isn't as easy as you might think. So it's been good having a bit of a break. But that said, in the new year, as of I think January the fifth, I am off for. Uh, quite a lot of the first half of next year, so I expect to be getting back into the swing of doing some videos. Right, we've got that difficult part out, that's good, and we've got the spare pegs, uh, and it says before we do anything we push the pegs into those holes. Uh, but let's get the other parts out that we're going to need, which is part 42, which is uh, this decorative piece here. Let's get that out first. And this is a nice sort of chilled, relaxing, say sort of lying in in bed kind of uh, stream because it's it's cold and wet and miserable outside. Don't want to get up if you don't have to. Ever cut yourself by accident? Uh, <laughs> not on the stream so far. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it is quite a getting the stuff out without the wood splitting has been sort of the the challenge. Because you get all these sort of cracks and clunks. And I've decided not to put any background music on, so you can put your own music on and enjoy just watching a guy build a hurdy gurdy. There we go. Well, so they've come out not. That's not too bad. Right, so let's uh, let's get assembling some bits because it says we've got to use the pokey tool, uh, which is uh, not that thing. The pokey tool, this thing, uh, to poke out uh, some of these pegs. I'm just wondering if I can zoom the camera in a little bit. Uh, maybe you can see what's going on. Let's try and zoom it out. Oh yeah, we've just dropped a, a cluster of frames there. It looks like it's back to normal. Yeah, it dropped a handful of frames. Don't know. Don't usually stream on Saturday morning, so they could be doing all sorts of things. Don't know. Uh, right, how do I zoom in my camera? Let's uh, sort that out. Because that would be quite useful. Let's make sure I select the right camera. I've got too many, too many things. Uh, can we pick a video? Yeah, that's a bit better, isn't it? <coughs> Excuse me. Right, it looks like we did have a little bit of an internet hiccup there, but we we seem to be back on track now. So, right, let's pop these out then. They make a horrible cracking noise, these things. One, it says I need four of them. One. I mean, the fact they give you a spur one of these tells you how delicate this bit is. Ah. That's okay, we've not actually broken the part. We've uh, The part is fine, we've just broken the surrounding housing. We'll tidy that up in a minute. Well, maybe after doing that, these ones will be easier to get out. But this is the risk. Three, uh, four. Right, four of them, and we'll just need to tidy this one up. Yeah. Now it says to take uh, each one of these. Make sure this is the right way up, because we've fallen foul of that before. So the decorative side is up, and these bottom four holes. Uh, I am to peg with these pins. Uh, yes, that way around. Now, we did actually provide a tool. There it is. We've got the 
hammer provided. Uh, should we all be wearing face masks? Uh, probably, yes. Oh, it started raining very heavily again. Have you ever thought of messing with potentiometers and similar components, getting the values to your computer and doing something with them? Uh, I was trying... Uh, yeah, actually, I have done. I've done a few videos on, on stuff like that, too. Uh, my day job is actually sort of more electronics than software. Uh, so, I, I you know, do know my way around uh, a circuit board, but... Uh, it's difficult to get people to do things to, uh, that, that, that they can do themselves at home. Uh, so that's part of everything I try to do, is to make sure any, anybody else can actually do it as well. And electronics gets expensive very quickly. It's actually not that difficult to get analog information into your computer. You, you, you can get a... you can basically buy an FTDI chip nowadays. Uh, which is a USB endpoint. Um, some of those even have, actually have analog in samplers. The easiest way, I think, is probably via a, a UART and the COM port, or as we did with the, the car, you can actually use a Bluetooth UART now. It's very easy. Also, no risk to your computer, of course, uh, plugging things in you know, if you go via the Bluetooth route. So quite easy to talk to boards externally. Right, I need to. this is going to make the camera shake because I need to push these in. The instructions uh, suggest that I use the pointing tool to sort of squidge these things in, like so, uh, but uh, oh, we'll run with it, we'll run with it, uh. Uh. <laughs> And that one says, uh, it's got a bit of, did I not tidy that bit up? No, it's okay. Right, that wasn't too bad. That was quite nice here in Bournemouth. I do like Bournemouth. I'm a fan of Bournemouth. Uh, I actually have the, the pleasure, is there still a Hilton on the beachfront in Bournemouth? Uh, the only reason I ask is, ooh, when I was about early 20s, uh, my girlfriend and I at the time went to Bournemouth for a holiday and we were staying in that Hilton and they uh, they, they messed up the rooms and in order to they, they, they took full full acknowledgement of it uh, and in order to uh, to compensate us for messing up the rooms they gave us the top floor suite for the week uh, which was really nice so if you see on the Hilton on the Bournemouth front it's an entirely glass uh, encapsulated suite and uh, it's got views of the ocean and everything very very pleasant uh, right, number 42, so that was this bit, that's what we're putting on here. And it says we've just got to sort of apply brute ignorance uh, to get that in place. Now I'm just going to make sure uh, I've not stopped the Twitch chat. Sometimes I stop the Twitch chat by accident. Uh, so, this one uh, is a, it's a squashing down. Oh dear. Uh. Yeah. It takes quite a lot of. Uh, I mean, this is never coming off, right? So I have to make sure this one is done correctly. Ugh. That creaking sound will never, uh, never make me feel comfortable about any of this. Now. I wonder if this, this hole here is decorative or if it eventually is going to be supporting some sort of shaft. Um, and I, I've got a feeling, I don't know, but I've got a feeling this is actually supporting the back of the uh, the hurdy -goody. So I think it's it's here that it's going to sit. Yeah, so it kind of looks like this will be supporting the, uh, the crank handle. The Hilton's moved near to the uh, the uh, conference centre. It's now an eight-storey building with a top floor bar. Right, well, that top floor uh, was a, a suite that I stayed in for a week. Right, so <laughs> there you go. And it was really nice because one of the things... I, I like I like going to holidays in sort of British seaside towns. There are some horrible seaside towns. But I like going out of season because I like the sound of the rain and the weather and I like the stormy seas and, and I like the wind sort of blowing through the town and things. I actually, it makes me like some sort of dystopian weirdo. Uh, but I actually prefer it. Uh, 54 and 55. Right, so where are these bits? They're on uh, one of these boards. 
Now, neither of those boards looks like it could be on this board. No. No, not that one. Nor that one. Uh, nor that one. Ah, this one looks a bit more promising. 54 and 55. So there's 54. And uh, 55 is this little... Oh, there's two 55s. Does that mean we need another one? Yeah, okay. So I need to pop out both 55s. And so this 54 with the two dots sticking out of it. Okay. Let's have a look. Where the, uh, the clip points? Ugh. There. It's easier to see these from behind. There we go. The other thing about that Bournemouth Hotel incident, I remember there being another couple there, and they were about 10 years older than uh, my now wife and I, and uh, they were they were like your typical uh, hyacinth bouquet levels of middle class, and they were giving us a hard time uh, over lots of things, uh, but they particularly gave us a hard time when they discovered that we were in the top floor suite and they had some regular room somewhere. And I remember them getting quite upset in the bar. In fact, one uh, morning we found them snooping around outside our door because they wanted to confirm were we actually staying in the suite. <laughs> right. 55. one of them. I know we're going to need both. It says only pop one out for now, but we'll need both. <laughs> we've got some, some, an interesting bot sort of appeared there in the chat. Uh, want to become famous by followers and viewers on something or other, a load of stars. Oh, hey, Alta. Uh, and Declan CD, yes, please. Oh, dear. Want to become famous. Do people want to become famous? Is that still an aspiration for many people? Right, it says we've got to connect that piece is that way round and looks like that and it's getting connected to that like so. So if that's that way round on there uh, that one's pointing that way, so it's like that. Okay, because again, once these are on, they ain't ever coming off. <laughs> That's really stiff. No, it didn't go uh, click and creak, that one. But that is apparently going to sit on a hinge like that. Curious. Hey. <laughs> 
<laughs> I tell you what, just so uh, we know what's going on with these things. It's not very often I actually have to do anything on Twitch, but uh, yeah, let's get rid of those. There we go. Uh, I do hope you'll do a hurdy gurdy playing stream. Yes, of course we will try and do a hurdy gurdy play. Oh, it's really good. kicking off outside with the wind. Uh, hi, I feel that for many, fame and fortune are liked in their minds as if one means the other. I feel most people who want fame actually want money. I think that's probably uh, quite accurate. Yeah. Some people seem to equate that fame equals money. I don't know. I don't necessarily think that that's always true. Uh, can Keat or Can Seat or Can Sete? Hello, I'm very well, thank you. Uh, we're having a. Because it's, it's miserable weather today, I'm doing a bit of hurdy gurdy uh, because X10 is with the grandparents. So I've got some time to myself. Uh, and we're going to be putting up the Christmas tree later on, which is unusual for us because it's very early in the year, but uh, we thought that the uh, little one might like the lights, so that's what we'll be doing this afternoon. I'm not going to be live streaming Assembly of the Christmas Tree because it's tedious and it's Christmas and it's all a big waste of time. Right. So that's going on there and getting hinged. This is an intricate mechanism and I'm not sure of its purpose. All sorts of linkages and things going on here. All right, so that's got to get squeezed on there. It's pretty tight. You know, usually everything on this is uh, has been quite smooth and 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 free flowing. That's uh, reasonably high friction. Now I will give them the benefit of the doubt because everything else has gone together so well that maybe it's just me sort of assuming that it should be a, a freely moving fixture. But I don't know what it does yet. Uh, anyway, parts 56 we need now. These are very small, uh, which were on this one? No, on this one. All right, so parts 56 are sort of these like chain link things. Uh, but really they're just going to be used for... Uh, stemming on uh, on those to stop well I mean this isn't going to come apart anyway uh, but it's just to put a, a decorative finishing touch I guess to to those so let's pop out these uh, parts 56 Oop. that's 56 Ooh. Uh, and I need two of them, so I'm guessing they've given us a spare because these are all these small parts they give us spares of. Dear me. There we go. No messing around. Two fifty sixes. And these get clamped onto the end here, like so. Doesn't say anything about uh, applying wax to them, so I guess oh, something's happened. Something's gone ping. I don't know what the pings mean. It used to give me a, a sort of a, a running digest of what's happened. Uh, obviously, it probably still does, but I have misplaced that window. I've been writing some interesting code recently, actually. Uh, one of the things I've been working on is a, a sort of vector-based engine. Uh, as part of the pixel game engine, and some of you will have seen seen some of the stuff. Occasionally, I drop on the Discord and do a bit of programming on there. Uh, and I'm quite keen on on vector art as an idea. Uh, so we'll, we'll be we'll be seeing a bit more of something along those lines, I think, over the next year. Uh, there's quite a lot of interesting algorithms surrounding vector art too. I've also just noticed that most of the time, I am I'm not even on the camera. 
let's have a look who we got. Uh, Apostolisk, hello. Yeah, Saturday morning stream. Yeah, as you can see, it's not coding, though. It is hurdy-gurdy building. Nice and relaxing stream. Right, we're up to some part with some mechanism, and it says we need to wax. So we're going to wax the back of this board. Oh, and then we've got gears and cogs and shafts and all the fun stuff after that. So uh, let's apply some wax then. Now, somebody was telling me on the Discord, and I can't remember who it was, that, that the reason they use waxes and not oils is because it's uh, it's probably Rosso. This is the kind of like useless information that Rosso tends to have. Uh, that the wax would delaminate the uh, plywood. Uh, so the oils would delaminate the plywood, but waxes don't. Which I'd never really thought of before, because I'm not usually accustomed to working with wood. Uh, but yeah, it makes perfect sense. Right, now we need bits 44 and 45, uh, which we can have read off. Forty-four and forty-five. Uh, I wanted to do uh, an SVG parser for PG. Yeah, there's quite there's somebody else doing an, uh, an SVG parser. It might be Megarev at the moment. He's thinking about it. I I've decided not to do SVG because I, I, uh, there was a reason. There's lots of tools that can do SVG, but I'm actually quite interested in rendering things with a little bit more uh, control, uh, particularly with regard to how the PG can and will render things. Uh, an SVG just it was fine, but it didn't lend itself to a suitable a suitable construction with enough information in, which is a shame because there's lots of ready-to-go drawing tools, of course, things like InScape or Affinity Designer that I use. Uh, Diego has also been doing some stuff with vectors recently. It seems like these things come and go in fashions, and we've probably all been subliminally uh, <laughs> affected by the same thing, but we just not really notice what it is. Right, 44 and 45. Uh, I need to clip these together. Thus. Missed. Right, I think once these go together, they ain't ever coming apart. Yeah, and that gives me some sort of, uh, well, it's kind of an axle, but not really. Oh, it does make the camera wobble. Okay, but it's quite useful, the hammer. There we go. I was in a pizza restaurant in Bournemouth after my main pizza meal... I was offered a Nutella pizza for dessert. Well, you, you, you sort of like comment that, TGD, like it's a complaint. I, I don't understand. Right, now we need this big uh, spur gear. Oh, that one, that one came out nicely. Good. That's refreshing. Uh, but now we also need all these little uh, 47s. Uh, which are these... Uh, it looks like, oh, we've got another spur gear somewhere that we've not got. What part is that? Part 48. Uh, that's not on here, that's there. Part 48 is on this one. Yeah, the gears tend to come out quite nicely, that's good. Uh, but it does, it does need uh, these. Uh, there we go. Oh, and these are actually labels. They actually have something on them. I don't know why. Well, they've come out quite easily. And it says to take the uh, the axle part that we've made and apply some wax. Now, when we started building the hurdy gurdy, I was all, yeah, yeah, we don't need the wax. Yeah, that's just a waste of time. And then about three parts into it, suddenly discovered, actually, do you know what? This could really do with some lubrication. So now we are waxing uh, most of the time. Uh, waxing. The the symbol it uses in the instructions is a bit unusual for waxing because it suggests that you dip a paintbrush into a burning candle and actually apply the wax that way. Um, maybe that's actually the right way to do it, but it doesn't say that in the instructions. Right, once I have this, is this 
sort of bi-directional. I think it is. So it's, there isn't a correct uh, up or down or left or right. I'm just going to trim some of the uh, wooden flash off there. And this is going to sit, and this is no particular orientation either. Right, so we can just shove it in, basically. There we go. And we'll just tidy up that tooth whilst I can see it. There's a little bit of a flash stuck in it. There we go. Now it also says you've got to apply wax to these teeth. Now this is why I think it does mean, yeah, you've got to melt it down, because, you know, sensibly, you know, this is just a waste of time, right? But I'll do it anyway. Uh, Voyager Sinfig is an interesting option. Do you know what? I've played with Sinfig. I didn't like it at all, but that was about five years ago. When I started the channel, I was looking for a tool to do some sort of vector-based animation. You know, for things like logos and that kind of thing. And then I realised, no, I don't want any of that crap anyway. Uh, but Sinfig was one of the ones I, I tried playing with. It was the one I persevered with the most as well, to, to be fair. Uh, but in the end, still found it quite, quite a complex beast. It really does seem that there are not that many good uh, open source vector art animation packages. Nothing like Flash. That's really what I was looking for. There's something akin to the original Flash. Uh, and it just that just seems to not be a thing. Which I thought was quite strange. I mean, there's tools you can pay for, certainly. Then I discovered that some of the tools that uh, are used to make professional animations have have free versions. I can't remember what it was called now, but the, the, the software used to make Family Guy, for example, that's actually uh, readily available. If you want some of the more uh, fancy features, you have to pay quite a bit. But Okay, so we've got two gears on a shaft. Uh, Rosso, uh, useless information, Rosso. <laughs> Are you are sort of this this font of interesting factoids. Now these things, whenever we've done them before, uh, these have been runners. So I'm going to make sure that these are actually smooth because these sit in uh, basically these act as a, as a as a bush burring type of thing. So I'm going to sand these down ever so gently, make sure that they are round. Just got to be careful not to sand flats into them. Open tunes, was that it? Is that what it was called? Well, I, I wanted to do vector graphics because I, I did the wireframe extension for Pixel Game Engine. I actually, you know, I'm, I'm using that commercially, I should point out. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how that's gone. Uh, but there's a new way I'm rendering decals uh, in sort of the prototype Pixel Game Engine that I, I have. And uh, it's very good at just rendering sort of polygons. We've discussed it before, I think, a few times. And... Uh, it made me think, actually, I could make an entire game engine out of a particular technique, but I haven't got the tools to create the assets that I need. So I'm using the making an asset editor, but I'm using that asset editor as a vehicle to make me finish the uh, GUI extension as well. So it's all sort of all clicking into place, but it's just all taking a bit of time. And things like building hurdy-gurdies tends to get in the way. Ooh. Ooh. Right, we'll 
I'll come back to that side. Gone on okay. I'm just got to remember these are only sheets of plywood, so if we apply too much pressure, we will snap them in half. Right, so we've got a shaft with two pinned gears and two rotary surfaces. I'm just going to also wax those. So I've got a feeling it's going to run on those. Alter says it's five degrees here. Yeah, it's uh, it's well, it's about seven degrees here, but it has been sort of cold and blustery and it's very wet this morning. So I was going to take part in an archery, archery competition this morning, uh, but it was cold off. It's no, don't, we don't mind shooting in the rain, we don't mind shooting in the wind, but when it's cold, wet, and windy all at the same time, and the field's going to be muddy, uh, it's not very much fun for anybody. Right. It also says I need to wax these surfaces. This is interesting. This is a departure from the design of the previous gearbox system that we made. Uh, where certainly the surfaces of the gears never came into contact with anything. Uh, but I'm guessing maybe a different designer worked on this part of the uh, the device. Clearly they, they want it to be very liberally waxed all over so it must be a this must be the the key mechanism, and I think I think it is. Looking at where it's going, because we've got another gear now to interact with it, and everything sort of sits in in the holes on the back. So that looks like it's going to be sitting there, and is used to sort of turn the the primary mechanism. Make sure that they're in mesh. Now, one of the things we discovered, when we test these things by hand, they feel dreadful. Uh, but when it's actually all built up and, and clicked into place, everything starts to feel like a it's really well designed. Well, I'll make sure that that is definitely uh, lubricated. I'm also going to lubricate around here. Now I guess the, the wax to begin with makes things feel a bit rough and sticky but over use it'll polish in and the friction may generate just enough heat to sort of even it all out and and run with it that way. So good, I'm pleased that that's kind of clicking into place. Right, uh, we're now onto the uh, sort of a secondary shaft uh, so we're looking for parts 49 and 50. Parts 49 and 50 are on Ooh, I think we're on a board we've not used yet. You should have got that window pane installed in your room. I've just had uh, my windows, well I say just, I had them done earlier this year and in my uh, little man cave here, the window that I look out of, I, I actually had it soundproofed and it's brilliant. I can't hear anything outside. At 49 and 50. Ah, there they are in the middle. Ooh, these are big parts that are coming free at the same time. Right, so I'm just going to try and not lose that bit, as we will do. Uh, so 49 and 50, but then also some gears as well. Uh, the gears are, well, A gear, uh, 51, and then 52, 52, 52. Right. 51. Ooh, that's a sneaky one. Fifty one sits inside this thing. There we go. Fifty one. Uh, Fifty twos we've just had before. Uh, they were with the forty sevens. There they are. It says I need 52M times 3. And we'll use the, uh, the dibber to uh, pop these out.
one. Now these are very tight, very thin parts. See the walls are very thin. Two. Three, good. Now they did actually provide spares of each of those. That's, that's, that's good of them. Uh, now before we put these on, I'm going to prep them again. Okay, right, 49 and 50, these two parts, uh, they sandwich together thus. I think we'll get the old mallet out to give us a hand here. YouTube subscriber. I didn't realize those notifications still came through. Uh, now it says I've got to apply wax to these external components. Let's have a look. So Family Guy was made with Toon Boom, which is proprietary, but Open Tunes free was Studio Ghibli and Future Armor. Possibly. Okay, fair enough. Now I, I concede I'm not a, an expert in these things. Uh, I just had my window swapped out. It used to be old and big. Now it's much easier to remember. 30 degrees C. 30 degrees, yeah, that's, that's unpleasant. I don't know what the typical weather is like in uh, over, over there. Yeah, I'm carefully remem reminding not to, uh, to dox people that I know where they live in the chat. Uh, right, so on here I've got to put the shaft, uh, sorry, the gear, spare gear 51. Let's do that first. It looks like it goes on in any particular orientation and sits on there nicely. Good. And then it's 50, uh, three of these 52M. So this is actually making quite a big uh, burring surface. One. Two. Three. Yeah, good. And we'll wax those down as well. Oh, we might be losing a few more frames again. Don't know what it is. Saturday morning must must get throttled. I don't usually stream uh, at this time, of course. Right, they're nicely waxed. I've waxed the two surfaces and I think we're going to start constructing sort of the back end of everything that's going on here. So looking at this, it's suggesting that, as we've just described, that's going to sit in there. Uh, there's another part which uh, we'll have to pop out in a minute. And I think this is going to sit in there, like so with our decorative front panel part supporting that up there and that there. 
and yes okay quite rightly it's saying don't clip some of these things in because we're gonna have a problem trying to clip these things in and assemble the stuff Ah, actually we may have a problem here because I'm looking at this I'm wondering if there's an instruction that we've not followed earlier on. Now the problem I'm going to face is I've got this hole has to support this uh, this collar right? but I've got to get that in to the bottom. Now the, dry, the drawing here in the instructions implies that we've not yet clipped on the bottom uh, but we did, of course, that was one of the instructions was to clip the bottom back on. So is it asking me to sort of somehow pry the bottom off? This is going to get exciting. We have to have a good think about how we're doing this uh, without breaking everything all over the place. Uh, but before we get that far, we need part 53, which is this support clip here. There we go. So a lot of things have to happen simultaneously now. That is going to go down on there and clip those gears into place. We see it's strange again. Right, okay, so this bottom board is actually causing us some problems now. Sorry, this bottom board here, causing us some problems. Maximum suspense. Well, that's it, because we're going to have to, I think, going to have to try and undo a handful of these connections, which is something we've not yet tried. Uh, we must have, well, I must have ignored or, or misunderstood one of the instructions earlier on. So I'm sure it said you've got to clip this down in order to, to support it. So we'll see. We will see now what happens. I uh, have to have a think about this. These little clips, okay, good, good, good. They're not actually too clippy. That's good. That's no, that one's pretty, that one's quite clippy. So that gives us a little bit of freedom to just inch those. Oh, we might be getting away with it. Oh, that one, yeah, the one doesn't. Oh, not too clippy. Oh, that's an awful sound, isn't it? Right, nothing snapped. So I think we might have gotten away with it. I think. Yes, look at that. Whew, whoa, that was too close, too close. Right, so now we can actually start constructing all of this, which we're going to have, we're going to need a, a desktop press or something to push all this together later. That now gives us the freedom. to start mounting and supporting all of these parts. So that's going to go there. The gear part that we've just made is going to sit on and run in there. On there. What really? There's no sort of clip or anything? I'm just going to put some wax on the end of that then. That's going to sit in there. This new part is going to support the roller there. And the one at the bottom. I'm getting a bit, bit big for the old camera view this, but do me best. That's going to sit there and there. It's going to sit there and there. And it's, that's the point, yeah, we can start squashing it down to put the lid on. Like so. Okay. So a lot of parts to sort of fasten down in one hit here.
quiet whilst I'm concentrating. That's not as free as I would like. Before it was a bit more sort of, I mean it's kind of free spinning in one direction. In the other direction, ugh, requires a bit of a, a bit of a push and a shove. Might be better once there's actually a handle on the end of it. Right, so they're pushed in, that's pushed in. And then I think it wants me to put the lid on. So hopefully <laughs> there's nothing else to go in this. So this is a big, big component of this project. I'm not entirely sure what that mechanism is for. Now it says to use the hammer to pop these all into place. of uh, horrible creaky noises. Oof. Don't think we need the hammer to do this. Oh you see there we go as, as, as intended now it's very easy to turn. That's amazing. I, I, that, that blows my mind <laughs> how when it actually goes together it, it suddenly all becomes like like good. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, yes, there is something that goes around the wheel. There is a small. I can't. I really misplaced it now. Uh, but there is a small block of uh, rosin or roisin or however you want to pronounce it. Uh, here it is. So they give you this small block, it looks like a cough sweet, uh, which is like a, a plasticky, sappy substance, which you need to rub against this uh, to turn it into, it's, it actually is to give it more friction, but I think it's to give it friction in a controlled way. That's, that's amazing. That really is. For something that's just clipped together plywood, no glues or anything. Now, ah, now I understand what this is for. So this is to support the strings, isn't it? There's the two string holes, I'm guessing. And one of the strings goes up here, and we can set the uh, the intonation, and then they, that's to, to give them tension, I guess, whilst you're changing. Maybe it's even a way of, of changing the pitch of the sound. Is it actually a, like a, a control surface, almost? Now you can change the, uh, the bend, the uh, the, the note? Don't know, but that's that's really satisfying. I'm continuously impressed by this thing. Right. Put that to one side because it looks like we're getting ready to start building. Uh, we've done that, we've done that. It says uh, double check here that everything is running smoothly. And then it's time to put in all of these sort of side spine pieces. There's quite a lot of these. 
Make sure I've got the right board. Yeah, there. So around the edge of the body are all of these spine parts. They're like ribs, I suppose, that uh, just, just keep everything clipped together. Just want to make sure we've not fundamentally missed any other parts. I don't think so. So let's pop these out. I'm going to use the knife. I'm not going to rush this because, you know, we've taken our time with it so far and everything's actually gone together really well. And I think that's as a consequence of not rushing it. It's taking our time, cutting the parts out rather than snapping them out. We've had to do no repair work at all so far. Which is nice. Two. I have one of these self-healing cutting mats underneath, so every time I jab my knife into it, it does make a little hole, but over the next few days it kind of, kind of heals itself, it just it seals back up. Yeah, it's friction in a control, exactly, it's exactly like a violin, it's basically a violin but with a, an automatic bow. Is my understanding of this instrument, uh, and instead of uh, finger positions along the fretboard, well, not fretboard along the neck, um, it has keys, which we've we've not even looked at the neck yet. So, uh, nearly all of the rest of the parts are to do with the neck, <laughs> and there's a lot of leftover parts. Yeah, so I imagine the necks to be quite a complicated thing with lots of moving bits. bit of mass production there. Hmm, these ones were pinned in with one more additional thing. My mass production, my attempt to be lean manufacturing was a complete disaster. We've definitely not got the 5S bods on the go here. holding that one in. Ooh. There we go. Right, that's quite a few things to pop out, but they're all the same. Well, I'm now now we find out they're not all the same and I've just mixed them all up. Now, I think some are left-handed and some are right-handed. Oh no, they usually they only put the decorative lasering on one side, but they've actually put it on both, so they are all they are all the same. Okay. There we go. Good. So these are used, according to this, to clip like that around the edge of the body of the hurdy gurdy. And we've just got to do it nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So one of these is a spare. Right, let's have a go then. Uh, so it's the small clip at the top, like so. One. The 
three. a bit different to the others see this one actually recesses flush whereas the others stay proud that does look to be by design one two three four five six seven eight nine ten. Oh, there isn't a spare you know it says only do this with nine of them uh, it's actually 10 slots. Sounded a bit crunchy, didn't it? Yeah. I'm just looking what's going on with this one. Just looks like the edge of that, yeah, okay. Should have saw that before. Now we've had a, a few drop frames, not actually that many, but we've had a had a handful this morning. Now the good news is next year I might be getting a different internet provider. They've just laid a finally just laid optic fiber down the street. Uh, so I'm hoping next year I'll be able to tap into that, but it's been laid under the guise of uh, for business use only. So I am contemplating potentially like legitimizing one loan coder in a way, uh, and you know, referencing it as a business. That reminds me, there will actually be something hopeful, hopefully some good news, uh, something exciting going on uh, next year uh, regarding one loan coder studios. Obviously this year we had something exciting with the uh, development of a successor uh, in the form of X10, uh, but next year I'm hoping that I'm going to be building a dedicated facility uh, in my garden, uh, because now we need the additional rooms in the house, uh, I have been relegated to, <laughs> to the sheds effectively, but the sheds are no good, so I'm actually going to build a brick structure, uh, which will be, uh, one will be a, a fairly large soundproof office and the other will be a bit of a garden shed thing. Uh, but I thought that might be an interesting sort of uh, set of video logs to keep as well, sort of the progress of that being built. Uh, so I'm thinking, I'm hoping we're going to have some time lapse cameras and things of it all being set up. And, and some of the technology that I've decided to kit out inside, because uh, it's going to be a triple skinned building, uh, particularly for the office part of it. Uh, so I'll have the outer skin of bricks, an inner skin of blocks, but then a third inner skin, which will be a plasterboard setup, because I want to route all sorts of wiring and, and specialist stuff behind the wall surface that I'll want to change sometimes. Uh, but also, 
uh, that I'm going to be putting uh, installing soundproofing behind that wall as well. Uh, mainly because I want to be able to play my guitars and drums and have like big screen telly and things and have a bit, bit of a man cave thing going on, uh, but also uh, to do uh, recording and stuff like this in. Uh, building streams when? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Fizzbuzz! Uh, oh wow, I came in late for the super interesting stuff. That sounds interesting. Uh, well, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be sunny. So I've been been trying to sort of sort my life out a little bit over the last few months in terms of getting all the finances in order and, and that sort of thing. As you, as you do when you suddenly become a dad, you just have to start thinking about things a bit differently, it would seem. Uh, so I'm getting all that in order and I thought, well, it would be useful uh, to turn this room that I'm in now uh, basically into, well, X10's room probably. And uh, that means I'm going to need somewhere else to go. And Mrs. Javid X9 has very kindly said, well, yes, you can build a basically a soundproof cinema recording studio facility at the end of the garden. Uh, so I'm going to take her up on that. Providing we can actually get some builders, that's uh, that's been part of the problem. This is really robust. I'm, I'm really pleased with how well this has come together. That's very nice. Is there a link for this hurdy-gurdy kit? Oh, hang on, I've missed a few chats here. Uh, look. Uh, when is the community showcase video coming? I always love seeing all the because yeah, I want to do a video of uh, reviewing the jam. Uh, I've, I've just not, I've just not got round to these things. So I, you know, no excuses. Um, I do want to get one video out before the end of the year, uh, and I'm hoping in the start of the new year. We're going to look, going to be doing the channel a bit differently, as I've described a few times now. Be a slightly different approach to things next year. Uh, that will sort of allow me to make videos uh, in. the with all of the restrictions of my new lifestyle and things that have been brought in. Uh, is there a link for this hurdy-gurdy kit? It's, uh, it's they're, they're available on Amazon. If this is not sponsored or out by any means, I've paid for this with my own cash. Uh, it's, if you type in hurdy-gurdy kit into Amazon, I'm sure this is probably the only one that will pop up. But this particular company do all sorts of different kits. Uh, and after doing this one, I'm really inclined to go and try a few of the others. Some of them are huge, like big, complicated like Ferris wheels and things like that. Uh, so basically, you're building a small house instead of a shed. First time chat. Uh, yes. Ba well, I have to be careful because uh, if it's considered a dwelling, that affects the status of the, <laughs> of the house. So it will have power and it will have... Uh, network facilities but it won't have any running water connected to it so it can't be considered a dwelling. Uh, the self-healing mats. Right okay I didn't understand I thought yes yeah, so basically what you're saying is this mat is, is like a, a really dense rug uh, but really dense rug. Okay I, I kind of get that. Uh, studio building streams could actually be quite interesting, maybe sort of like how the 8 bike guy did them. Yeah, it depends. It depends who ends up building it. Obviously, the, the brickwork side of things, I don't think I'm prepared to do myself. I've done some brickwork. I'm not very good at it. Uh, but all of the internal wiring things, I, you know, I, I can do that myself. Yeah, it's it's something I'm going to be doing. I'm, I've got to wait for the weather to be good because it's, it's England, right? So... Uh, <laughs> I don't want to be doing building too much in the rain. I've also got to design the the structure now. I have uh, designed it. I've I've used uh, some like free tool to sort of decide roughly what it is that I want. But now I'm going to have to design it properly. Uh, some proper architecting tool. I'm going to get an architect in to help me to sort of build the structure properly. I'm I'm hoping fundamentally this is it's an investment as well because it'll add considerable value to the property to do it right. Right. We've put the uh, side ribs on. That's certainly given it some strength. And it, so it looks like we're now building, well, more gears for the looks of it, but I want, rather than building gears, I'd quite like to build the handle uh, for the end. So I'm just wondering why it's not letting me build the handle for the end. I can't see the handle. You can see there's a lot left to do on this. I mean, I. I was sort of under the impression this kit might take one or two hours to do. It's it's really is it's a it's a couple of days to do it properly. You could rush through it, I think, but to do it to do it well. So that looks like it's the handle. I mean, just look when you you guys probably can't see all of the instructions here, but it gets so ornate. 
Right, that's the handle there. I'd quite like to put the handle on the thing. But I'm just looking to see, is there a reason why I can't put it on now? And I don't think there is. So I'm going to skip forwards a bit. Uh, so I'm just going to recall which page we're on. So we've just done page... 17. Right, we're on page 18. But I'm just going to run forward to the handle. So let's have a look at the handle. Uh, which is... Uh, 104. So quite a decorative piece. Uh, this one here, 103. 105 is needed, then all of these uh, spines, and there's a shaft we haven't built, which is that shaft there. So let's let's build this bit up first. Right, so we'll get you. Ooh, that's uh, that feels like it's well bonded in. That one wasn't, but this one. Oh, it wasn't too bad. wasn't too bad. There we go. Uh, but we do need all of these bits, 104, and there's no spurs. I guess by the time you get to this stage, you're supposed to know what you're doing by now. <laughs> Good, I'm glad you found the link. Uh, Alter, is the shed where you plan to host streams? Yeah, it, it will be, yeah. Uh, so it'll be, I'll basically be moving out of the house. We only live in a small house, so now that there's three of us living here, I think it's a bit selfish of me to just fully occupy a room. Uh, so I think I, I need to, to relocate somewhere. Now, I did look at sort of maybe renting some premises, but no, it's just, that's not practical, really. Not where I live, anyway. But the, the other side to it is, if I decide to change my professional career, uh, not necessarily to YouTube, but just in general, uh, I quite like the idea of having a, a home office consultancy doing doing work like that. So... It's also a place where I can have uh, operate a business out of. These are tough. So there's one in that corner. And there's one down that side, right. Let's do these ones first. That corner. And that side. Corner. Side. Part of it's also that I spent many years uh, as just enjoying being a musician and I don't get to do that at all at the moment. I, you can play through headphones and you can play with FL Studio and, and have lots of fun that way but uh, my heart lies in playing electric guitars very loud, uh, and I just don't get that that opportunity now. When I lived in Manchester, we used to rent a rehearsal space there because there's loads of rehearsal spaces in Manchester, uh, and you know that was great fun. We could go whenever we wanted, be as noisy as we liked, uh, but we can't. I can't do that in my in in this home. That's not the part that's cracking away. Though. That's just the supporting board around it. Uh, 
Having difficulty getting a handle on things. Yes. <laughs> uh, still playing with your Kinder Surprise toy. Yeah, this is a great Kinder Surprise toy. Also, just had a look at the 2021 Advent of Code Challenge. Uh, well, there's quite a few people. Well, you know, Gorbit's here in the chat, so uh, no doubt uh, he's, he already did the challenge yesterday. Uh, in fact, I'd be surprised if he's not now constructing the challenges for the rest of the week. Uh, right, these are going... Hang on, my phone is, is pinging, so that's... Oh, OK, I don't know why it's pinging. OK. Right, we'll finish off these bits, but then I think I'm going to have to wrap up the stream. Uh, somebody, rather selfishly, uh, is going to need feeding. Uh, so they're all going around that way, and these pop on there. Right there. And they just rest there loosely. Because there's a secondary ring uh, which binds them all together, which is the, the one at the bottom. Uh, I thought you did live in Manchester. Well, I used to. I don't anymore. I don't live that far away, really. So, I live uh, in between Manchester and Liverpool now. That's interesting. So it's all a bit sort of squidgy. That I guess it does need this second structure uh, to uh, to give it the rigidity. Uh, but I can't put that on until I've made the central shaft, which is this part here. Uh, and I'm not going to make the central shaft today, I don't think, because uh, I have to go and feed somebody. So. <laughs> You say, did I hear something about you moving? Uh, well, no, not quite, Alex. I'm thinking of uh, relocating sort of my my man cave here into a, a special built facility at the end of the garden. And Saucy sixty three, one ring to bind them. You've just joined in. Right? You've not been here uh, for a while. Okay. Yeah. Well, and um, sadly, uh, that's all I've got time for this morning with the hurdy gurdy build. So uh, <laughs> I know it's a bit different, but it is what we do when it rains and it is raining at the moment so uh, until I see you again uh, I'm, where, where am I looking? Up there, up there uh, take care of yourselves, bye bye <laughs>